I think I'm a much better musician, a much better person. I understand this music better. I understand people better because of teaching. The transition um, from classical music to jazz was a pretty smooth transition. I was uh, trained classically in, in high school. And um, it gave me an understanding of music. It gave me an understanding of a tradition, harmony, melody. And what excited me about the music was it was very challenging. Uh, the, the one thing that was a drawback for me was I didn't see a lot of people that looked like me in the orchestras. You know, I didn't see a lot of African Americans. And you know, the idea of everything being written down was fine, but when I got into jazz, I learned about this thing called improvisation. And that's where you can create on the spot. So the composer composes the piece, but I get a chance to be a composer as well. So I love both um, styles of music, but jazz gravitated towards me, one, because of that idea of improvisation. Two, I saw people that looked like me. I could identify with it and um, it's taken me all over the world. It's brought me here to Argentina.
My reference, that's a hard question because I have so many teachers, so many masters that um, have influenced me. Growing up in Baltimore, I was hearing a saxophon saxophonist named Gary Bartz, who I didn't know was one of the master saxophonists in the world. I just knew him as the guy in Baltimore. As I got older, I realized that he was like top notch, one of the best in the world. And when I went to college, I studied with a master saxophonist named Bill Pierce. And I went there because he had played with Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. And during that time in the early 80s, Wynton Marcellus and Branford Marcellus, they were very famous. And I heard Branford Marcellus went to Berkeley, so I was like, that's the place for me. So I uh, went there and I, I graduated from Berkeley. And when I graduated with my, my uh, bachelor's, I went to New York and got my master's. And there I studied with Jimmy Heath. And Jimmy Heath, he's like my father. He's the guy that, I, when I went to that school, I said, I want the kind of relationship where he's like, not just my teacher, he's my mentor. I, I had that vision that we were gonna be very, very close. And now it's been almost 25, 30 years. He's like my father. We, we sit down and talk about music. We go, we, we have dinner, we, um, we watch basketball. I don't like basketball, but my teacher likes basketball. So I just wanna sit next to him and I'll be sitting at the house and the phone rings, it's Sonny Rollins. So imagine Jimmy Heath and Sonny Rollins on the phone, and I'm just sitting there. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm sitting here watching basketball with Antonio. And Sonny Rollins, oh, that's Antonio. I'm like, that's Sonny Rollins at my name. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, um, Dizzy Gillespie, it was very short, but I got some life lessons from him. James Moody, one of another men mentor, Slide Hampton, John Faddis, Mogul Miller. I mean, the list goes on and on and on of, of the um, masters that, have contributed something very special to me in my life. Musically, um, how to be a man, you know, how they are as husbands, how they are as fathers, um, because that's, that's what it is. It's not just playing a saxophone or a piano or drums. They're human beings. So I have great mentors and great examples of what it takes to be a top-notch human being. I'm glad you brought up Roy Hargrove because we grew up together um, I met Roy at Berkeley, and he was already becoming famous at the time when he got to Berkeley, but we played together, and then he asked me to join his band, and he got signed to a record label, RCA, and we did his first record, and then we started traveling. We went to Europe, we went to Japan, you know, these young kids, 20, 21 years old, making records and touring the world. It was a, an amazing, amazing time. If it wasn't for him asking me to join his band, I don't know if I would have this career I have. So I, I owe him a lot because he gave me an opportunity. And he's definitely one of the true masters of the trumpet.
I came here, I guess it was four or five years ago for a jazz festival in St. Louis. I remember it because it was when the, the volcano erupted in Chile and uh, there was a lot of ash in the sky so you couldn't fly. So we, um, we drove all night long to get to, um, to Buenos Aires and we spent the night, myself and George Garzon, and then we flew out the next day. So I remember that. At this stage, when I go to places, I try to go with no expectation other than giving my best. You know, th that's the only expectation I have is just to come in and be a professional, try to have a good attitude, and just do my best. And then when you meet people that are kind, you know, it makes it even better. So I've met so many people here that have been so kind, made it so easy, you know? So talking, eating together, being on the bandstand, it's just been easy. And when you connect on that human level, you transcend the business transaction. It wasn't just a business transaction. It's like, I felt like I met my cousins. I met my brothers and my sisters. And it's been um, just a wonderful time. I'm, I'm actually sad to be going home. I have to go home, but I look forward to coming back because uh, this culture seems to be very, very warm. You know, and um, some wonderful young musicians that I met people that are eager for information and anything that I have, I think is my responsibility and duty to try to share. I don't say I know everything about jazz or everything about anything. The little bit I know, I just try to give it away because when I give it to them, it, it comes back to me. Something comes back, you know? So I'm going back with a, a really good feeling. I'm going back with um, this. That's good. And uh, it's just been a wonderful trip. I've got the world on a string. I'm sitting on a rainbow. Got the string around my finger. What a world, what a life. I've got this song that I sing I can make the ring go Anytime I move my finger Like you mean Can't you see I'm in love Life's a beautiful thing As long as I hold that string I'd be a silly so and so if I should ever let go I've got the world on a string I'm sitting on a rainbow Got the string around my finger What a world, what a life I'm in love
want so If I should ever let go
making it right, baby. I'll stay home every day. But you're so mean to me, baby. I know you're gonna drive me away. Love is like a faucet. Jazz, the tradition, is an oral tradition anyway. And it's, it's passed on from master to student or master to disciple. So what I'm just trying to do is just carry on the same tradition of um, everything that I learn, I give back to, to the student population. And I think the things that my students get from me that's special is that I'm not just a professor that went to college and read books and have degrees. I'm a professor that has degrees, but also has been on the road for 30 years and recorded hundreds of CDs with the masters. So when I tell them a story about what's happening in the world, I'm telling them from experience. So teaching is probably the greatest gift because a lot of people don't realize when you're teaching, you're learning at the same time. Like at the college, and don't tell them that because I like my paycheck, but I'm getting paid to practice all day, you know? If I have like seven students and, you know, seven hours of playing piano, seven hours of talking about music, seven hours of thinking about music, it's the best job in the world because I'm doing what I love. And when you can see you transmit some information to a student and maybe they don't get it right away and you see it in time, you see the light bulb go off, it's the best feeling in the world. So um, I feel very thankful um, for that opportunity. Again, Jimmy Heath, who was my teacher at, at the college, he retired and I got the gig after him. And I think I'm a much better musician, a much better person. I understand this music better. I understand people better because of teaching. So, we've been, 
We've been doing this at the Bebop Club, but we have so, more, more, so many more people, so I want to do it here. I think we can have some fun. You want to have some fun? There we go. All right, so I'm going to separate the room. One, excuse me, uno, dos, tres. See? Thank you. 